New York Democratic Congressman Jamal Bowman is expected to plead guilty today after being charged with pulling a fire alarm on Capitol Hill. Set to be arraigned less than 15 minutes from now, about 9.30 this morning, in D.C. Superior Court. Now, this event happened last month. While members of Congress were scrambling to find ways to fund the government, Bowman says he will be paying the fine issued and adds that he did does not, did not, uh, nor intends to obstruct any House votes or proceedings. Capitol Police saying security camera footage shows Bowman allegedly looking at the door, which read, quote, emergency exit only push until alarm sounds. According to court documents, Bowman allegedly looked at the fire alarm and pulled it. Again, that is from the court documents. The complaint goes on to say after sounding the alarm, Bowman walked by Capitol Police officers and did not even tell them that he pulled it, noticing that the alarm went off. Four minutes after sounding the alarm, he entered the Capitol. Bowman has called it a, quote, innocent mistake. I'm bringing Congressman from Texas, Troy Nails, on this one. Congressman, thanks so much for, for coming on. Do you, can, do you care to weigh in on this one? Again, Jamal Bowman, uh, again, pleading guilty to uh, pulling a fire alarm here, Capitol Police investigation. Uh, according to him, we don't know yet the arraignment set for today, but he, they're going to slap him with a misdemeanor, a $1,000 fine. According to him, he also says they're going to dismiss this after three months, and this was an honest mistake, and uh, without a conscious thought, this is what he told the press. He thought it would open the door. He was just trying to get to the vote. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the punishment. Congressman, do you buy the story? Do you agree with the punishment? Your thoughts? Uh, Sean and Emma, thanks for having me. I don't know the last time I touched a doorknob, but I don't think any of them are painted either red or orange. I haven't touched one of those uh, recently, but uh, I kind of, if that's his excuse, he thought it was a doorknob. I think that, uh, quite honestly, I don't know why he's even uh, pleading guilty to this thing. I think if you know this guy and you've seen who he is and, and some of his interviews, he should have pled not guilty by reason of insanity, and he'd have got away with it. He'd have got away with it. Uh, you're up here in a D.C. court. Uh, you know how they, uh, the two-tier justice system works up here. We got J6ers here that are in jail up there, uh, in our jail over here in, in D.C. that have been there for months. It's just another sweet out deal for Mr. Bowman, but I tell you, you know the fella, he should have pled not guilty by reason of insanity because I think he's a little nuts. You have to consider his background. Uh, we're learning he had worked as a school principal. Think about how many fire alarms are scattered throughout school districts. Um, it, you know, it, just the fact that this all happened and the timing of it all, all seems, uh, again, suspect at the time. But again, um, pleading guilty, at least that's what we're hearing, and then charged with a $1,000 fine, a formal apology in the works. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Congressman, while we've got you, got to ask you about the new Speaker of the House uh, Republicans all voting in favor of working together, by the way. It's something we haven't seen in at least three weeks to support Mike Johnson. What do you anticipate for Speaker Johnson to do as he leads Republicans in the House? I think it's fantastic. Uh, people that know Mike Johnson, obviously he had everybody. The 220 Republicans that were on the House floor yesterday, we all voted for Mike Johnson. Sure. I love the okay, new the like, nickname they got from the far left. That they're scared of this guy. Mike. Calling him Mega Mike, Mega Mike Johnson. I love him. He's a big Trump guy. Trump loves him. He loves Trump. I think we're going to get some uh, positive results under uh, Mike Johnson, Speaker Johnson. You know, we've been up here for three weeks. We couldn't find the right person. Quite honestly, our conference threw out the All Star mm -hmm. team. But then you get a guy like this to step up to the plate. He gets all of us on board with him. So I think it's a great opportunity. It's the right time for, for Mega Mike to come up here and provide that leadership. We got appropriations bills. We got a fiscal crisis we've been dealing with. And I think Mike is the right guy to address these issues, make tough decisions. The American people are begging for leadership, and I think Mike can deliver on that. And Congressman Nails, maybe you can answer this, but you, you had many options. You had Kevin McCarthy again. You had uh, Scalise, uh, the ma uh, majority leader. You, uh, again, had Jim Jordan, the judiciary chairman. At one point, you thought you might have Congressman uh, Tom Emmer. Uh, but for some reason, it was Congressman Johnson that was elected without issue. Can you tell the American people why? Yeah, because Mike has been up here, uh, uh, he, you know, he's uh, like eight years, and he is a, uh, he's a professional. He doesn't really offend people. 
some people come up here and they say things and, and people get offended because, you know, we've, we've become pretty soft, quite honestly. The American people get offended very, very easily. And people up here in Congress get offended very easily. So when you have individuals like Jim Jordan and, and Kevin McCarthy, now, they've been up here for decades and apparently they offended a few people and, and they don't forget it. But Mike Johnson, I mean, he is just, he's cool, he's calm, he's collective. He's a Christian. He, he, he wears his faith. Everybody knows it. He's just, he's a professional at all times. And I think people trust him as well. He'll tell you something you may not necessarily agree, but he's very respectful. He doesn't talk at you. He talks to you. And so I think uh, he has a very bright future, I think, in this conference. And I told him yesterday, I said, you know, your life is going to change. He has a beautiful wife and family. He's willing to step up and serve this country of ours. I think it's the right time, and, and, and I congratulated him, and we should be proud. It'll change dramatically. So, again, you got to lead this House, uh, potentially work with, you know, people in the other party, including the President of the United States, a 51-year-old, so some uh, younger leadership stepping up and leading the House. Congressman Troy Nels, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. You too. Take care.